Your Excellency, President Uhuru Migai Kenyatta, Mama Margaret Kenyatta, Excellencies, Presidents, and other leaders from other African countries who have joined us today as we mourn our third president, Deputy President, diplomats who have been here, ladies and gentlemen, Wananchi Ote Hamjambo. Excellency, I know that many of us will share my plight today. My plight today is just like a, cla a member of the clergy, either a, a father or a padre who is asked to eulogize a bishop, but not to talk about the bishop's religiosity or religion. I've been asked today to talk about our president, but without talking about politics. I don't know how to eulogize a politician without talking politics. <laughs> the family of Mike Baki, led by Jimmy, we are all with you as the nation of Kenya at this very, very sad moment when we say farewell to a great Kenyan patriot, Emilio Mai Kibaki. But then, how did Mai Kibaki come into where he came into? You know, Mai Kibaki as a youth, Mai Kibaki as a student, Mai Kibaki as an intellectual, Mai Kibaki as a politician. The story was told to us by Jaramogi and Mwai that after Kanu was formed in Kirigiti Stadium in 1960, a draft constitution had been presented there, had been prepared by the one Mr. Ojino Keo, who was Jaramogi's secretary, and he died on his way back to Kisumu through a road accident at the uh, escarpment. Then later on, Jaramogi went to Kampala as a guest of President Milton Oboti. I found Obote was campaigning with a very beautiful manifesto. I asked him, how who prepared this manifesto for you? Obote said, there are some young men here in Makarere who are very good. Their leader is a Kuala Kenyan. Then Yamogi said, I want to see him. He brought Mwai Kibaki. When he brought Mwai Kibaki, Yamogi told him, I want you to do the same, same manifesto like this for Kanu. And he prepared with his team that beautiful manifesto. And that's how Yamogi now invited him to come and become executive of officer of Kanu. And that started the journey. We know Kibaki as a member of parliament for Donholm. You know Kibaki as a minister for commerce and industry, as a minister for finance, as a vice president, as a leader of the opposition, as a president, as a retired president. And now here we are saying bye bye to him, a great Kenyan. Mayor Kibaki is a gentleman a man of conviction, a man who loved perfection. You worked with Kibaki first and the opposition together as our leader. How he used to lead 
how he would discuss the budget and come up with an eloquent exposition of the budget better than the Minister of Finance and tell him how it should be done. Kibaki will tell you these people don't know what they're doing. Bure kabisa. And when it's just a lot of nonsense, you say, Imavia kuku. <laughs> but he was a gentleman by excellence. In the cabinet, we worked together. He would allow a lot of debate in the cabinet. And he also gave the ministers a lot of authority and power to run their ministries. So long as you do not get yourself involved in graft. The biggest enemy of corruption, Mwai Kibaki. And nobody is indispensable when it came to issues of corruption. So we have learned a lot from Mwai Kibaki. We came with almost a bankrupt economy and transformed it. At one time when we were living, it was rising at the rate of 7% per annum because of Mwai Kibaki. Of course, we have had also our differences. When at one time, Kibaki got involved in an accident. Others, opportunists, took advantage of that position. We never held it against Kibaki. At that time when we were negotiating post-election violence, the stocks had collapsed at Serena. Kofi Annan invited me and Kibaki for a meeting. We sat in the office of the president, President Kikwete, President Mkapa, Grace Marshall, and Kofi Annan. We talked and talked. In the end I said, I'm ready to come down to this point. This is the this is minimum. And Kibaki then agreed. So when we agreed, we shook hands. After shaking hands, the other people now wanted to come in, into the room to try to persuade him not to agree. He told them to memorize Akila Kitu. Sasa kuna kitu tena tunakwenda kuongea na Donia sasa. And we came out and shook hands with Mwai Kibaki and he kept that those words. There were differences sometimes in the course of running the government, but all of them were able to resolve them amicably. So in retirement we will continue to remain friends. Each time he has been an advisor to me in many ways. So I've really lost a friend. The country of Kenya has lost a true patriot, a great leader, whose value will only be known with the time, as time continues to unfold. Mwai Kibaki, Emilio Mwai Kibaki, rest in peace, rest in eternal peace. I bring finally also to you people condolences of the Kenyans in diaspora around the world who are not able to be with you here today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Right Honorable Raila Odinga, for a wonderful tribute. Allow me now to invite for his brief tribute our Deputy President, His Excellency, Honorable William Samoy Ruto. Again, we request our dear Kenyans out of respect